Hello, I do want to welcome you all to this next stop on our virtual tour of the churches, this sanctuary visits that we are making. Today we are standing outside of St. Anne's Catholic Church in Kosciuszko, Texas. This church is designated as a beautiful Catholic location to worship, but it is also known as the only Polish church in Wilson County. As you can see on the marker for the church that says the name of the church and also a little bit of its history, the church was founded in 1898 and has been a beautiful representation of the Polish history that is found on the south southern part of our Archdiocese of San Antonio, but also has a lot of very beautiful history in it. I would like to at this time invite one of the parishioners from here at, at St. Anne's, Brandon Dar, who has graciously volunteered to help us with tour guiding and to talk a little bit about this church because while I know of it, my grandmother went to church here, mm -hmm. you're a little bit more connected. How long have you been a part of the community here at St. Since, since I was born, so okay. 24 years. 24 years, you make me actually feel, feel old. I'm 33. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so what is maybe one of the things that's kind of a give them a quick tease or something that they can look forward to that you're gonna talk about as your favorite thing about St. Anne's Church? Uh, well, my favorite thing has to be the pipe organ. Mm -hmm. because I like to play pipe organ. But outside of that, the main mural over the altar is probably the most signature piece yes. of our parish here at St. Anne's. Yes, it is a beautiful work of art, and it just recently was put in, if I remember correctly. We completed the remodel uh, in about 2007, 2008. So it's been about 12, 13 years since the remodel was completed. Awesome. So I do want to welcome everybody to this, to this episode of our sanctuary, this visit to St. Anne's. This church is about 45 minutes outside of San Antonio, but we do want to hope that you take the time whenever public masses resume, public visiting happens, that you get a chance to come out to really feel and visit a lot of these locations. There is a lot of beauty and history involved in these churches. And so at this time, we do want to go ahead and begin transitioning into our tour and invite you to come with me to view this beautiful church here at St. Anne's. Now, Brandon, as we're entering into the church, I will have to say this crucifix doesn't look like it really fits with the church as it is right now. What's the history behind this? Yeah, so it's a little odd if you first walk up because we have a nice brick church and we have a wood crucifix. Well, this crucifix, from my understanding, is actually original to the first church built here in Kosciusko in 1898. After that church was demolished, a few things were kept, and one of them was this outdoor cross, which was restored a few years ago and now sits right here at the entrance to the church as a reminder of the real reason we're all here. Now you were also telling me, and the only reason I'll bring this up now because we can see it in the plaque here on the, up against the wall, this church was actually designed by a very famous architect. Yes, the architect's name was Leo Dalman, or Dielman. Uh, he is well known for designing many of the painted churches that you'll see around Schulenburg, as also uh, he remodeled several of the churches around here, including Shestahova, and Panna Maria. Both of those churches were remodeled by him in the 1930s, 1940s. And so he's very well known and uh, he was quite the architect. Yeah, the church is amazing on the inside. So at this time, let's head inside to look at this beautiful church. So I do want to welcome everybody into the main sanctuary here at St. Anne's in Kosciuszko. As you all can see, this is a beautiful space, a beautiful home for our God that was built I think the beautiful thing for all of us to always remember is how old our faith actually is. And so by coming to these churches, by looking at these sanctuaries, it connects us a little bit to that communion of saints, a kind of community that we are all a part of. Many of our churches we sing, there's an old hymn, we all sing it, Faith of Our Fathers. By walking into these old churches, we are connected in a very tangible way that you can feel to the true faith of our ancestors of who we were, who we thought God was. This church has always been one also that has been very near and dear to my heart, as this is the church that my grandmother on my mother's side worshipped at. So my family is used to this church, seeing the beauty of the interior. Now, I don't want to spoil too much of the tour that y'all are going to get, but at this time I am going to go ahead and turn it over to Brandon, who is going to be leading us in a little bit of the history and then a tour through the interior of the church. So this is the interior of our parish here at St. Anne's, but I wanted to briefly go over the history of the, our parish here. So the town was founded in 1880. Uh, people from Shestahova had moved their way up, up the Cibolo Creek, and they created a little settlement here 
which they named Kosciuszko. The first school was built in 1892 and was run by nuns, of course. The first church was built in 1898, and they built it with $2,000 and a whole bunch of dedicated free labor. The first church was only 40 by 80, 40 feet by 80 feet, very small, but it was built completely out of wood and had an ornate wood altar that was over 20 feet tall and spanned the full width of the sanctuary, as well as two side altars. That church was expanded in 1933 because the parish had grown so much it was becoming impossible to try to fit everyone in just on a Sunday. And so what they did is they added about 20 feet to the front of the church and they extended it out in, in 1933. In 1936, electricity came to Kosciuszko, and they bought an organ from the Wicks Organ Company, and they set it up in the church. And that replaced the old reed organ, or the pedal pump organ, so that music could be provided at a little bit better quality. In 1941, uh, Monsignor Fogel decided that it was time to look at building a new church here at St. Anne's. The original church, by that point, even with the expansion, had gotten so small that even with two Masses on Sunday, not everyone could physically sit at Mass. So it was World War II and funds were short, so they started the building campaign slowly. After the war ended, they had raised most of the money they needed to begin construction. In order to cut costs, uh, parishioners actually donated their own time and labor to build the church. Most of the concrete, the floor, and a lot of the finishes on the inside were actually completed by parishioners and not by a construction company. It goes to show the faith that motivated the people here in Kosciuszko at those times. This church was completed in 1951. At that time, the original furnishings of the original church were discarded or donated to other parishes, and this sanctuary was whitewashed, completely white all the way across. It had the original marble altars that are on each side and in the middle, as well as the marble altar rail. But outside of that, the church was bare. As time went on, funds increased. People were able to donate towards the church. When the church opened at first, in order to make the difference of the funds they needed to build the church, each family donated money and bought their own pew in the church. So the the pews, of course, knowing you're good Catholics, they filled up from the back to the front. So the people who had the money initially, they bought the back pews, and the people who didn't have as much, they ended up buying the front pews. But it still continues to today, everyone has their family pew, more or less, that they tend to sit in. Now, not all the pews are full anymore, and uh, some of the families have moved on, but the heritage still remains. In 19... 65 after the Second Vatican Council, they removed the high altar and they pulled it forward to allow Mass facing the people. In uh, 1973, they added the beautiful stained glass in all the windows for the 75th anniversary of the parish. And this continued small increments up until 2007. In 2007, uh, the priest at the time, Father Wojcik, decided that it'd be a good way to honor our ancestors and the original legacy of the first church by having the interior of the church painted. A uh, artist from Poland came and the murals that you see now over the church were completely hand painted. Everything in here was painted by hand and it took about a year, year and a half to complete. The main mural, which we'll see in a little while, is of St. Anne, St. Joachim, and Mary as a child. It was the original painting that hung over the original altar of the first church. And so it was a tribute to the original church that was here to add all this painting back. And over time, we've made small changes. The organ here was rebuilt in 2017 and expanded. And that's our parish here at St. Anne's in a nutshell. And then this was all just the new work here that was added. And, you can and we can couple them together, and we can also throw on some of the pedal notes here and open it up a little bit. And this is just about full organ.
was completed by Ross Oregon Company out of Fort Worth. And they took the original organ, restored it, rebuilt it, and then added the extra stops that we saw here down here. And the organ has multiple voices and multiple ways to be played. So here we are at the footsteps of the main sanctuary here at St. Anne's. Behind me is the original marble altar from 1951. When the church was first built, the altar was against the wall, the tabernacle was on top, and there was a crucifix hanging above it, and the rest of the church was whitewashed. On this side here, the original marble altar for the altar of repose had the statue of the Sacred Heart on top, and on this side over here, the Marian altar had the statue, large statue of Mary, which is in the back, on top. So when the church was completed in 1951, it was very plain, very simple, and quite different from the original church here at St. Anne's. Over time, a lot of things were, were brought back and added. This statue here of St. Anne and Mary is from the original first church, and it was restored, brought back, and painted. The... Um, Statue of the Sacred Heart, I believe, was original to 1951. The Statue of Mary is from the First Church, as I believe the Statue of St. Joseph is as well. This crucifix was added in the 1980s, uh, late 1970s, and originally hung directly above the altar with a gold surround. All of that was removed when we did the renovation in 2007, and the... Um, cross was put here on the side. We added the Divine Mercy painting here. And in the center of the church, which I've been ignoring until now, is the beautiful painting of St. Joachim, St. Anne, and Mary. And a lot of people don't know, but St. Anne and St. Joachim were Mary's parents, the grandparents of Jesus. And since this is St. Anne's church, it was a special way to remember them. The original altar had a small painting, which was about this large, that hung above the center of the altar. And that painting is in the rectory. We still have it today. So when we did the remodel, we were able to have the artist from Poland go and match the original painting and draw it up on a much larger scale above the main altar. In the original church, we had statues of angels, which are now in the back, on each side of the altar looking at the altar. You have to remember, in the Mass, both heaven and earth come together. So even though we can't see them, we're surrounded by the saints and the angels. And we depict that here with our angels on each side. So on the left, we have the angel holding the precious blood of Christ. And on the right, we have the angel holding the body, the most precious body of our Lord. This was all tied together, going back to the Gothic theme of the church. So we have a lot of arches. We have a lot of painted uh, re redos to signify just the beauty and bring back some of the original architecture of the first church. So I mentioned we have beautiful marble altars and I forgot to mention that this marble is not local, it's not from this corner of the world. All the marble in this church is actually from Italy. It was shipped over by boat from Italy and so it's very expensive. Here we have the original altar rail for the church. Now, a lot of people are not familiar with altar rails anymore because they've more or less disappeared from churches over the last 50 years. However, there's an interesting theology that's connected to the altar rail. The altar rail is meant to be made out of the same material as the main altar. And the reasoning is, this is the people's altar. This is where people were meant to receive communion. 
the sacrifice of the Mass happened on the main altar, and so by extension, you could receive at the altar, the people's altar here at the steps. So we're very fortunate and very blessed that we've been able to keep our original altar rail, which is made of the same marble as the main altar itself. So this statue here uh, originally was on the Marian altar up at the front of the church, and it's a statue of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And this is now in our candle room. And it's a beautiful tribute to our Blessed Mother and a wonderful way to come in. You can light a candle and pray and ask for her intercession for whatever needs we may have. So this is the little nook that we have here at St. Anne's. It was originally confessional, and uh, they pulled out this extra confessional and converted it into a little museum nook. And so you'll see here we have a whole bunch of different little pieces that have been added over the years. Here on the left, this is a model of the original church, which was built in 1898, which was just a simple wood frame church with a pretty tall steeple. Here in the middle, we have another picture of this church, and it was uh, created on a saw blade. And the saw blade um, belonged to Peter J. Lissy Sr. And this saw blade in particular was used to cut wood for the school, uh, the schoolhouse that was built here in the parish, which actually ties over here, we have a model of the first school, uh, the first Catholic school built here at St. Anne's. In addition, we have a statue of St. Anne, which was a traveling statue that uh, traveled all over the area around here in 1998. And in the center, we have a beautiful picture from the dedication of this new church in 1951. And people often don't realize when they're traveling through a lot of small towns but especially here in Kosciusko, the population used to be much larger than it was today. At the time this picture was taken in 1951, we had over 900 active parishioners here at St. Anne's. Compared to today, where we're around 300 or so, it's, it's been a drop, but the parishes were very active and very vibrant. And so it's a wonderful picture, and it displays many of the priests and religious that came from this parish as well. So Brandon, I do want to say thank you for inviting us into your home parish and my, my, uh, my maternal family's side of the family's home parish. Mm -hmm. It has been wonderful to hear the stories of the church and to hear you play that beautiful organ. I know for myself, some places it almost feels they're built for certain instruments. Yes. And while a guitar sounds okay, you can sing nice hymns with it, or a regular keyboard or piano, certain places as soon as the organ starts playing you can really feel the acoustics as much as hear them so we do thank you for opening that side of your parish up to all of us one of the things also that i think is very important to constantly remind people is the reality that these small rural parishes were deeply ingrained in the culture of vocational discernment and here in kosciusko they have had quite a few priests and nuns come out of the parish and so I wanted to invite you just to mention a little bit or at least say their names. I know you have sure. them in the book that you have with you, but just kind of mention who they were and kind of, if you would, talk a little bit about that history of vocations from sure. this parish. So it was very common in all the rural parishes here to have a lot of priestly and, and religious vocations. Uh, just kind of going through here, we have a centennial that has some of the priests who came from here. The first uh, priest to be ordained here was uh, Reverend Edward Dorotzik, and he was born in 1906, and he was ordained in 1930. After him was Reverend Julius Dorotzik, who was born in 1919 and was ordained in 1946. After him, we had Reverend Monsignor Benedict Prusky, and he was born in 1917, and uh, he was ordained in 1942. And then finally, uh, probably the most well-known around here, was Reverend Monsignor Lissy, Monsignor Thomas Lissy, and he was born in 1926 and was ordained in 1940. And he served also as a pastor here. He came back in his later years and uh, passed away in our parish. He, he, he left home and he came back. But we've also had a number of religious sisters. Um, we had uh, Saria Kruzekwa. We had uh, Sister Lorietta Kruzekwa. We had Sister Lucy Kruzekwa. We had Sister Janelle Kruzekwa. You'll notice a pattern here. We had Sister Mary Barbara and Sister Carol Mary Viatric. So over a time period, really between the 1930s up until the 50s, 
we had six religious sisters and four priests come out of this parish out in the middle of nowhere. Which, well, and that, that makes sense because that was kind of the heyday of Kosciuszko as well. If I remember your talking earlier, you said that was kind of when this parish was at its biggest point. Yes. When it th was thriving the most, was most active probably. Mm -hmm. And that makes sense then that out of all of that activity out of this parish came vocations. And so I constantly remind people, pray for vocations. If there's one thing our archdiocese needs, especially at this time, is for more and more families to talk about the reality of vocations to their sons, their daughters, their grandkiddos. To talk to the servers in mass, the kiddos that you see on a regular basis. Letting them know that it is okay. That there is a path that they don't have to only be considering that marriage is the only option for them. But in reality, there are other vocations in the life of the church. And it is our call that brings those forward. Bishop Gustavo has always been very adamant to remind people, vocations do not grow on trees. They come out of beautiful communities, expressions of our faith in a very visible way. So constantly be praying for vocations and talking about vocations in your church. I do want to thank Brandon once again for his time with us. At the time of this video, they are expecting a baby here in about a month for his family. And so we are very excited and we hope everything goes very well for that delivery Thanks. and look forward to hopefully in the future, maybe some point, getting a chance to meet her. So thank you all very it. much. Thank you. Uh, we're up here in the bell tower of St. Anne's. This is the little extra for today. Right here behind me, we have the largest bell. His name is Philip. He's original to the church from 1898. And Philip was donated by the Philip Nistroy family. And that's why he's named Philip. Next to him, we have a smaller bell, which is not named. And uh, Philip plays at basically a C. This one here plays at an E. And then we have a small bell. And normally in Catholic churches, there are two types of bell peals. There's the American court peal, which is a C, an E, and a G, or some association of a major court. And then in parishes that have a European feel, they have what's called the Paternoster bell peal, which has three notes very close together, mimicking the original chant from the Paternoster, the Our Father in Latin. Paternoster, very close together. Our parish happens to be neither of those. We are on a way to have an American chord peal. However, our top bell plays an octave above Philip. And now this is odd in a lot of ways, but what's really interesting about it is this bell appears to be either from a small school or possibly from a locomotive. It's a very small bell, very high pitch. And so it, our bells here in Kosciuszko sound unique compared to any others in the area. So as we have just gotten the chance to view these beautiful bells that are attached to the church here at St. Anne's, Archbishop, many of you may know, recently decided to do a flight over the archdiocese, blessing the diocese. And those parishes where he went and flew over, he asked him to ring the bells. And though Archbishop isn't flying over this part of our archdiocese, we do want to take a moment, ring these bells in commemoration of that flight, and also in recognition that one day soon, public masses will be resuming in our parishes.
as we finish with each of our stops in this sanctuary series, visiting and seeing the different churches in our archdiocese and around our area, we pray the Angelus. And so I invite you to pray with me as we pray this beautiful prayer to our Blessed Mother. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, and she conceived by the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it done unto me according to your word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the word was made flesh, and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection. Through the same Christ our Lord, amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 